This channel is made possible through the support of generous listeners just like you. If you would like to be a part of helping us bring our message of hope, peace, love, and spiritual truth to the world, please consider heading to experienceofthesoul.com support where you can join us as an ongoing patron or simply make a one-time gift. Blessings on the journey, dear friend. Natural Awakenings Magazine, Zen Living Realty, and Support Tech Staffing present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 117, Family Honor Code. And now your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I'm the host and I am here in 818 Studio with my producer. Hello everybody, this is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 117 of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. Today's episode, Family Honor Code. Boom, yeah, I'm so excited to talk about that, the Family Honor Code. And before we get into that, I mean, Dave, really what this all reminds me of this, not only this title, but... Um, I feel like I'm coming out a little bit <laughs> as, a, as a teacher and as a and as a presenter in a different way. And uh, today's show is a part of that, but also some of the great classes I'm going to be offering in October. Um, you know, we're having people join us from around the country, and um, I'm just I, I'm excited about next steps and about being able to support people spiritually, really in a little bit deeper way than I've been able to in the past. Yeah, and um, it's really exciting. Yeah, and what were some of those shows? We have a a dream big mastermind class. Oh yeah, that now that one that class is I'm telling you it is so powerful <laughs> and it's going to be 3 months so it's a huge commitment but I made it really reasonably priced. Okay. Um so dream big mastermind is uh limited to 7 people only and um I also want to assure you, uh, I know the first one's going to fill up. I'm probably going to do one more on the same night. The other strange thing is it starts at 8, o- eight o'clock rather than 7. Um, PM. Because, PM, PM just, okay. mm-hmm, because we have some people on the West Coast um, that are joining us for some of the courses. So I'm trying to offer them a little bit late so that people can uh, make it better in those, uh, you know, those earlier time zones. But the Dream Big Mastermind is really about seven individuals coming together, and each person has their own individual dream, and they're going to get loved, they're going to get supported, they're going to get encouraged, and probably even challenged. But the challenge will be from a loving place. It'll be from a place of supporting that dream to come forward. Um, and it's and the material in the Dream Big Mastermind is based on the book from Napoleon Hill, called Think and Grow Rich. So that's Mastermind. The idea of that started in the early 1900s. So that's that class. And then the other one that's on the weekend is called The Divine Revealed in Nature. And that one's going to be very different because it's going to be real inward. It's going to be about studying what comes to us, how these these, um, universal archetypal our typal patterns that we find in nature have have tremendous meaning, have tremendous impact in our lives, and actually are there to help us. So both both courses, I think, are going to really support people on their journey in real different ways. And uh, are there any prerequisites? Do you need to have taken any of your classes beforehand to no, attend these? No, not on either of these. Not on either of these. You, you can just have never taken a course and come into it. But what I do want you to know is uh, all my classes, they require participation and there is going to be engagement. So these aren't classes where you just sit back and watch. Right. You could you could just watch YouTube if you want. <laughs> yeah, just just watch an old show if right, you want to exactly. do that. Right, right, but this right. is so so they'll be asked to, you know, participate in discussions or, or Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end, uh, well the divine revealed in nature, that course at the very end we're even going to do a walkabout. We're going to go to a beautiful state park here. Oh wow. And and see and so people even joining us long distance, we're going to encourage them to 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 go and do a walk about some kind of little mini hike where they live and bring that back to the group as well. So it'll be a beautiful uh, connection with God in, through, and as nature. 
and then seeing the deeper messages for us. So okay, and, yeah. And so so we'll have links to all of this uh, in your in the show notes for episode one hundred and seventeen. And I you know I, and I think it's it's really important that um, especially as you are going through this transition mm-hmm. of coming out of you know full time. Mm-hmm. I think you call it like pulpit ministry, but that yeah. doesn't mean your ministry is stopping. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, how I view it is my ministry is expanding, and I'll always have a soft uh, space in my heart for CCU, and I'll probably always support the ministry in various ways. Um, one of those, uh, uh, you know, being through supporting their next steps and supporting the individuals there. But but um, I was just called really to serve a larger number of people. And so I can't do that with also doing a pulpit ministry. And so I feel like in a way, CCU uh, nurtured me into who I am today, and I nurtured them. And so I I think we have a beautiful, uh, uh, even though I'm leaving and it's a parting of ways, it's very positive on both sides, I believe. Yeah, so it's good. So my ministry really is expanding, and um, just, uh, uh, you know, there's other things I'll be telling you about in the next coming weeks. I mean, my schedule in October is so full. I'm speaking at Unity of New York. I've got a big event out at a ranch in Sorrento that's happening on October 16th. So, you know, all this stuff is going to be on my website, and I always, I probably should, should encourage you to go to the website which is my my full name, CynthiaAliceAnderson.com. And, uh, you know, get on my mailing list so you know what's coming up. Because honestly, there's so many things. If I talked about them on the show, I mean, here we are five minutes in. I've not started the topic yet. <laughs> and, and I'm ready to go with this topic. So, yeah, just check that out yourself. If you want to get on the mailing list, go ahead. But, yeah, my schedule is, is already filling up. I have turned down some local... Um, speaking opportunities for Sunday morning because I really want to encourage CCU moving forward. I don't want to, you know, speak somewhere else and pull people from a Sunday yeah, morning. Yeah, well, it's just you're, you're you're blowing up. I mean, we we haven't even talked about bringing on a new sponsor. If you've been listening to the show, yes, you know that Support Tech Staffing has has been the sponsor starting here in September. I'm sure at some point we'll have those folks on oh, the yeah, show. Oh yeah, we'll have them on the show. Yeah, but uh, but it's just you're you're blowing up, and uh, as and I, I think I've said it before, you know, and, and as Bittersweet as it is mm-hmm. to to have your tenure at CCU Orlando come to an end, I am so excited not only to see what God in the universe has in store for you, but just to even for for my part, just to have a small kind of role to play. I'm really excited about what's next for you. Oh, thank you. Well, and you know we haven't even mentioned all the all the stuff that's going to come out on the new platform. So <laughs> so yeah yeah thank you, Dave. Well, you and Shannon, uh, you know, are both playing a huge part. So it's it is an exciting time, and and I hope people as they're watching my journey um, that what you're noticing. Not necessarily anything about me personally, but what you're noticing is the practice of the principle Mm -hmm. and how the principles do support you. That's right. And how the universe absolutely loves us and that the steps I'm taking have been in preparation for many years, most of which I wasn't even conscious of, but I was following my guidance and taking next steps. Isn't that how it is, though? I mean, you're you're, you're working your your process Mm -hmm. and then out of seemingly left field, it's, it's the universe says no you think you're you think you're you're preparing for this but you're actually preparing for this thing which is even more amazing than you could have planned oh absolutely true absolutely true and so today what we're going to talk about as Dave already said the family honor code I I wanted to discuss this because um I talked about it I can't remember where I first spoke about it but it was something that my son and I decided to do for our household and then I talked about it uh, I led a parenting group at our church about this very thing. And what I noticed is that all the parents seemed really excited about the idea and also that there were some grandparents on the call, too, who realized that you don't have to be necessarily a parent to have an honor code for your home. You don't even have to be a grandparent. You could be an aunt or an uncle or, a, you know, you can be a single guy who with no family or somebody with lots of family. Because really, the idea of the family honor code is how what, what energy, what consciousness, what um, you know, what is acceptable, what is unacceptable behavior in our home, and, and, and not in a way that's like pejorative, do this, don't do that, mm-hmm. but, but like what 
who do we want to be in this space, right? So who do we want to be in this space? And for me, um, as a parent, I thought it was really important to create an honor code. And uh, uh, the idea uh, came from a book by Laura Ramirez. And um, well, we can put a link to that in the show notes as well. Right now I'm spacing on the full title. Um, but Laura Ramirez, and she talks about it. Uh, she and her husband really raised their children uh, in... Um, uh, well, her husband's a therapist on the reservation, and so they really live in a real tribal culture. Is it a Keepers of the Children? Yes, Keepers N- of the Children. Native American Wisdom and Parenting. Yes, yes. And uh, so it's not my original idea, but however, each family, each person that makes an honor code, what's so important is that you make it your own. But the idea to do it really came from that book. And boy, there have been some incredible ideas for me and for our household out of that book. And so, again, just because I say family or just because I'm saying I'm a parent, please don't turn it off because if you're a single person, if you're partnered with no kids, it doesn't matter. This can apply to you because what you're saying is, this is how I want my home. This is the energy I want. And this is how we choose. In other words, this is our conscious way of relating. This is our conscious way of relating in the household. And it would be wonderful for any couple uh, also to to do this. So uh, there's there's a piece we haven't completed because we, we want to, from this, make a family crest, and we want to get this printed. Uh, my son is doing the artwork for it, and mm, we— and That's we, cool. Yeah, and we came up with the, with the honor code together. And before I get, even get into the actual code— what I want to tell you about it um, that I think is real important is this is not a list of rules with one person enforcing and one person in trouble if they don't do it. So rules means the parents in charge and the kid has to do it and will do, has to do it out of fear. Right? So that's what rules are. Mm. But an honor code, everyone is responsible for upholding it. And everyone is responsible for calling each other out. So to even do this is going to require a lot of trust of the other family members and also a real willing, well, sorry, a real willingness to be uh, vulnerable and to be able to speak your truth and to be um, honest, you know, about your feeling reality. And really what I'm talking about is creating a, a, an emotionally safe environment where um, where vulnerability is honored and where there is an emotional intelligence, an emotional intelligence. So the family honor code is not rules, right? It's a mutually agreed upon document that is written by all members of the household. And uh, as I uh, worked with a parent group recently, you know, people with three-year-olds were, were you know, really excited about, you know, how, how they were going to talk about it. And what's so amazing is as your family grows and matures, you may add to it, you may take away from it, you may get more, you know, in, uh, in depth in the way that you discuss it. But I've already sensed the change and a shift uh, into the po- even more positive in my household uh, with this. Uh, It's also made me, as the parent, even more aware of, am I sometimes expecting my child to do things that I'm not doing, (laughs) (laughs) right? And and I can't wait till till next week, too, to to, um, bring Kathy and Todd on from Zen Parenting Radio. We're going to talk a lot about that. So we're going to have a couple shows in a row that's a lot about really just taking responsibility for your emotional reality, and the Family Honor Code is a part of that. Yeah, uh, it feels almost like a like a family constitution where everybody has, you know, kind of a representation and everybody gets to chime in on it. And it's not just whether it's, uh, whether it's parents to children or, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, Shannon and I having her folks living with us. And may, I wish oh, I yes. could go back in, back in time three years ago and, you know, <laughs> and do this. Never too late, Dave. No, you're right. I mean, you know, my son's 13 and we're just creating this and, um, you know, uh, 
I think that always in families, we think everybody can read our mind, <laughs> you know, and know what we want and what we expect and what we hope for. And so uh, the process of putting this together was really enlightening because of how we were approaching it. And it took about three or four different conversations, you know, before we could really like start start to put things down on paper. But uh, one of the things we talked about very simply was... Um, you know, what would you, what would you want? And just like actively listening to the other person, because, you know, it took a while to get to what was most important. And so now there are a list of seven things that are on our honor code. And so um, let me just take a breath here. And then I'll, I want to tell you what they are. And then I want to talk a little bit more in depth about each of them, just so to give you an idea. Um, And as I say this, I also want you to know that uh, I don't expect that you will take my list and say, this is a list for my household, but you might, um, or you might totally get fresh and new and more in-depth ideas than what I have here. But before you read that, help help me to understand how, and maybe after you read them, I'll understand, but yeah. right now I'm having a really hard time understanding how these aren't rules. Like I'm, I'm thinking... You know, okay, don't leave your dishes, you know, in the sink, put them in the dishwasher. I mean, we're not talking about that kind of basic mm. kind of things or help me understand no, that. No, they're more values. It's more about how we relate, not what we do. Okay. Right. And so let me give you an example. I'll, I'll start with the first one and that'll really help. Okay. I'll just do that one. The first one is tell the truth. Mm. Right. So if you want to give the dishes example, <laughs> <laughs> did you do the dishes? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no. So so telling the truth. Well, there are a lot of different ways that one can show up, right? So if you uh, tell the truth means if I come into your room and you're pretending you're not on your device and you are, and I say, what are you doing? It means telling the truth. It also means if somebody says to me, are you okay? Mm then I have to say either yes or no and give whatever level of detail I'm comfortable saying right then. Right, so tell the truth, that's profound. Shannon and I have a thing called lie, lie detector. <laughs> oh, nice. And it's it's if we say if we say one thing and, and the other person suspects that, like, are you feeling okay? Or are you okay? Or are you mad at me? You know, no, I'm fine. And then we'll say lie detector, which we have mutually agreed if... If you say, if you say yes to the lie detector, and you you continue on with what I think is not the truth, <laughs> then I am no longer I'm no longer responsible for whatever. But it's 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 basically our our way to do that, just I, to yeah. check ourselves against being honest with each other. Yeah, and and I think as a you know uh, from the parent role, um, uh, what's been really important, let's say. If I go into my son's room and he's on a game and he's supposed to be reading or doing homework, and I say, what are you doing? And and he says, I was playing a game. I go, oh, okay. So when do you think you want to be doing homework? I'll do that right now. Okay, great. Or, oh, okay, you're doing a game. Well, what we had talked about was you doing homework. That's right, we did. So tell me about what how you made the decision to play the game instead of do homework right mm. instead of well, you say, i told you to blah 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 okay so if he's telling me the truth i'm going to want to really check that out mm. and if he says for instance this could very easily happen you're right you did say do homework and i said i would do it but the truth is i'm exhausted and i felt like i needed a break i go great how long of a break do you think you need because breaks are important Mm-hmm. I, I can totally hear that. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, what do you need? But but let's just tell the truth about what's happening and not pretend that, you know, I don't see the game or that you're not doing what I told right. you to do. And it turns it into a conversation and not just a one-way do as I say kind of a thing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and and, you know, sometimes it's like, you know what? I really want you to be able to tell me the truth and know that I'm not going to explode if you do. You know, I mean, the way I grew up, if you told the truth and you were doing something wrong, it just meant you got spanked. Yeah, you got a whooping. <laughs> I mean, go get a switch. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> Actually, I was never, I was only spanked once my whole life. Um, and that, even that, my dad cried all the way through it. Um, but um, I, I, I cannot, I cannot share that same story. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, being in the South and your dad in the military, I'm sure you got yeah. the switch or yeah. the belt I mean, or something. Thankfully, he was never like major dad. You know, he didn't come home. When he right, came right, home, right. he took the fatigues off. But my parents just, they weren't afraid. They weren't abusive. I would not say that by any stretch. But, um, you know, spanking wasn't ever off the table. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, we always had the fear of it for sure. Right. But but um, we didn't have the kind of... Um, emotional awareness or emotional intelligence in my household either that I have now. And that's something I've really cultivated over the years. And I still make mistakes. So what the Family Honor Code does is it kind of evens the playing field of expectations of behavior and emotional safety. So so that's what's so important uh, to me. So number one on the Family Honor Code is tell the truth. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to um, do the other six in the second half. So we'll be right back right after these brief messages. We'll return to the program in just a few moments. But first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, Natural Awakenings Magazine of Central Florida, Greater Orlando. Each month, Natural Awakenings magazines across the country take a practical look at the latest natural approaches to nutrition, fitness, creative expression, personal growth, and sustainable living. Natural Awakenings magazine is a free publication and is available in selected stores, health and education centers, healing centers, public libraries, and wherever free publications are located. You can learn more, including advertising opportunities for your business, by calling 407 628 0705. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Zen Living Realty. Zen Living Realty's mission is to mindfully serve, connect, and positively impact their customers, partners, and community through their Zen approach to real estate. Their vision is to be the most trusted real estate brokerage in the Central Florida area. You can reach Zen Living Realty at zenlivingrealty.com or by calling 407 800 2717. And finally, we'd also like to give a special thanks to Support Tech Staffing. Support Tech Staffing is an innovative staffing agency built on the principle of caring about their employers and employees as they navigate these new workforce and workplace challenges. If you're an employer, they want to be your human resources partner and help with the changes needed during the pandemic. If you're a candidate, They want to become your lifelong career agent to help you grow into your fullest potential. Support Tech prioritizes support over volume, integrity over profits, and will treat your business and your career as if it was their own. You can learn more at supporttechstaffing.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T-E-K staffing.com. And now we return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome back. And again, we're so grateful to all our sponsors, all the individuals, too, who give mm-hmm. $2 to $25 to $100. And our sponsors really have given big for this spot. So we just thank them and bless them. And we hope as our listeners that you'll, um, you know, seek them out. Um, I've heard wonderful things from all of our sponsors that, um, that you know, supporting the show has definitely been good for business. And we love that. Because we love supporting people who support us that are, you know, individuals on the spiritual journeys. So. Yeah, and, you know, every week we, we give a shout-out to our our angel partners, you know, who, who donate uh, $25 or more a month. But I want to I give a special shout-out to Rick Kilby, who has been with us since nearly, nearly the beginning. And um, although he doesn't get the, the shout-out just because of but, – but he's been faithfully giving every week – since 2018. And so, Rick, we see you, we recognize you, and uh, we thank you so much for your your continued support of the channel. Thank you so much. Yes, and, and we're going to have Rick on. Uh, we just need to work out the day. He's got a brand new book coming out about Florida's healing waters. Oh, wow. And the research he's done is amazing. And, um, you know, water is so spiritual. So we, we definitely want to have Rick on the show as well. I don't think I even told you that yet. So <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so the Family Honor Code, number one is tell the truth. We talked a little bit about that one. Number two, give unconditional love. Mm. Wow. I'll tell you, if all we did was, was, is those two, 
that really probably would be enough. But uh, give unconditional love, man, that that is huge. That's like if somebody can't sleep, they need help and support and it's midnight or it means I need help on my violin music or, you know, um, I had a rough day at school or I had a rough day at the office. It means listening. It means supporting. Giving unconditional love is so powerful. And to me, that means I have no expectations of what I'm getting from you. I'm just going to give because I love you. I'm just going to give because you are and because I care for you deeply, right? So giving unconditional love is different from saying I love you. It's even different from a smile or a handshake or a hug. It goes way beyond the physical. And it's an energy and it is also an action. Giving unconditional love. Very, very important. And it requires a tremendous amount of um, emotional awareness and a releasing of, of like... Um, a to-do list, <laughs> you know, it's like one of the things I've really worked through as a parent is how the different pace that my son operates than I do and releasing those expectations that he's going to move my speed because almost nobody moves my speed for one thing, but, but just loving him who with how he is and who he is, it's giving unconditional love. It's like not expecting him to be something other than what he is. And that doesn't mean he doesn't have jobs to do around the house. It doesn't mean, you know, that he doesn't pick up his room. It's nothing like that. But it's that I have an understanding of how to work with um, what does need to get done or or how, you know, I can support him where he is. So um, it's so important to give unconditional love in your home. So important. Hmm. And um, what's so amazing about that is... Um, you know, kids do what they have seen modeled. And uh, a couple months ago, or yeah, a couple months ago, we were uh, at my mom's. My mom is, uh, you know, has been on hospice. And my son, who was 13, um, stayed up himself for like a couple hours every night to watch my mom on his own. Mm. And he didn't do that because anybody asked he did it because he has seen unconditional love be modeled, and he absolutely was uh, embodying that beautiful unconditional love with her. I mean, it was so sweet. And as a matter of fact, I tried to get him to go to bed, and he said no. <laughs> I said, oh, well, tell me what's going on. Why, why no? I said, because you never tell me no. What's going on? I am supposed to sit up with Nanny. And I said, okay. He said, it's mine to do, and I'm to do it alone. Well, I'm not going to argue with that. I could feel the love in his statement. Mm. Beautiful. And then I'll tell you, my mom with Alzheimer's, even on morphine, before we left, she, she opened her eyes and looked at him and said, thank you. Mm. Ah, beautiful. And that's what giving unconditional love in your home means. So he just absolutely gave that. And I know it's because he's been surrounded with love. He's been supported with love. He knows what love is. So number one, tell the truth. Number two, give unconditional love. And um, well, these aren't really numbered, but the third one is talk it out. Talk it out. Yeah, that's... That's a tough one in our house. Yeah. Because, yeah, it, it, it's hard to even find a common ground sometimes. Yes, that can be hard know? when you have generational differences. And, yeah. and you, when you can't even agree on what truth is or any, or something, you know, then uh, it can be hard to talk it out. So the uh, there's this kind of this mutually agreed upon ceasefire. <laughs> well, that's kind of what the unconditional love piece yeah. is. Yep. Because, you know, if we're trying to force people into our viewpoint, that's not loving. <clears throat> right. And if, and if, so if you can't talk it out, it's, you go into a space of acceptance really, mm -hmm. because you know where they are in some way they may or may not know where you are, but if you're really unconditionally loving, that's okay at some point. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're right. I mean, there's, uh, although we don't agree, you know, politically, if, if, <clears throat> if something were to happen, I mean, we're there. We're not, we're not, well, oh, yeah. Here's a Trump supporter. I'm not going to call the ambulance. You know, it's nothing <laughs> like that. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. And, and, but Dave, you make a good point. And so, all of these, like I say, and these are ours, mm-hmm. and and in our in our household, we have very dynamic um, expressions. Uh, we have a lot of discussions, and as a matter of fact, uh, in my time of transition, I was thinking of possibly, um, I was thinking of possibly uh, uh, renting something, you know, short term, till I could figure it out. And I thought, oh, there's no way I could live in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> We're just too loud. <laughs> right. um, but we have a real dynamic expression. And I don't mean we yell because that's further down the list. But, I mean, we play music, we talk, we laugh. You know, we're kind of loud. And so if something's really going on, um, for me, uh, it's uh, I feel better when I can hear what's going on. And I'm also willing to give uh, other people their space. But, um, like, if something's not being talked about, then... Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this statement, Dave. I heard it in recovery. It's uh, secrets bring sickness, mm. and and I grew up around a lot of family secrets, and so talking it out means there's no secret. Talking it out means um, I'm going to say how I feel, and there's room for that. Talking it out means hey, we're going to go to this event, and uh, if somebody's there, you know we're we're not going to be around them, and here's why. Um, so talk it out. It can also be when um, there is, you know, a moment of misunderstanding, and rather than getting mad and stomping off, we say, "Well, wait a minute. Can we can we just come back to this and talk this out? Because something's happening here, and I, you know, maybe there's a trigger. Maybe somebody's gotten elevated. Um, so talking it out is not always in the moment where it's elevated the right thing." But in that case, then we we ask for a do over, <laughs> and I uh, to me that's really empowering to have a do over. So yeah, that's the third one. Talk it out, and the and the the fourth one that's very much like the third is sing it out. And what I've noticed is if you try to argue in a song, it gets funny really quick. See <laughs> <laughs> uh, also Hamilton. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's this band called Switchfoot that has a song oh, yeah. that called Sing It Out. And um, there's a line in it that's um, it's sing it out, sing out loud. Take what is left of me and make it the best of me. And uh, I think about that song uh, when I, every time I see that one. And, and, you know, this is posted in our home, so I see it. Sing it out. And... And really the idea is if we're, you know, this locked in an argument, which of course happens when you have real humans living together, um, if you start singing about it, it just gets dumb. <laughs> and then you can laugh and uh, or pick up your instruments and play a song together. It, it pretty much heals just about anything. And that's been, a, that's been a fun one for us. We've only had to use that one a couple times. Yeah, we'll, we we'll, put a, we'll put a link to that, to that song in our show notes. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do. Um, I like Switchfoot a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the fifth one, um, all these have, uh, various, uh, and deepening meanings depending on age and depending on awareness of yourself. But, but the fifth one is take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Now, um, that can be as a, like from a parental view, I'm going to take care of, of what I need. And I'm going to make sure I'm not giving myself away to the point that I can't take care of myself, you know, that I'm going to take care of what my needs are. I'm going to take care of my finances. I'm going to take care of my relationships. I'm going to take care of myself. Well, for the the kid, um, the the um, from the kid perspective, um, this is a really important one. And this was um, this was my son's. Uh, one of the, uh, he added several of these was, um, and then we agreed upon them. Um, his was take care of yourself. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, if there's something I can do for myself, I should do it. It's like, yes, yes. If there's something you sh- you can do for yourself, you should do it. And, you know, he, of course he, I've mentioned he has jobs around the house and things like that. But, um, you know, uh, 
as a parent, I love to do things for him. And there's going to be always things I do for him. Like, I love getting him a snack. Can he get his own snack? Of course he can. Right. Well, he gets to clean up and he gets to do other things and he gets to make me breakfast on the weekend. So if I want to make him a snack, I can. Well, obviously, if I'm busy, he does it. (laughs) You know, he doesn't say if I'm in the middle of something, mom, I need a snack. (laughs) Right. It's one of the nurturing things I do. But so his point was, if I can do it, I need to do it. I said, yes, yes. You know, you don't need to ask me about this and that, you know, and it also means I take care of myself by knowing what I need. You know, like uh, one way he may need to take care of himself is when he comes in after school. He may need 30 minutes to an hour in his room doing nothing or doing a game or reading or playing with, um, you know, a game or whatever, doing Legos, whatever that might be, because that's what he needs. He doesn't have to ask my permission for that. And that's knowing, that's like knowing yourself, right? And then when you know what you need, you take care of it. And, you know, at 13, you should be able to do that. You should be very versed in knowing what you need uh, in a given moment. So that's been a really good one for us. Um, it's been a really good one for us, and it's a really good one for me as as an adult. Um, many of our listeners know that um, every day I do journaling pieces, and I made up a new document called Morning Pages, And on that document, every day, you write your self-care things. And uh, uh, the other day, as I was writing those, you know, I'm thinking, take care of yourself. And it was like, do the highest self-care possible. And, And it felt so good to just honor what that was. And so what I noticed is I was more relaxed throughout the day. I was, I ate really good food. I bought a high very high quality food and enjoyed it when I cooked it. I enjoyed it even more when I ate it. (laughs) And so it was a great self-care thing. So for me, take care of yourself is more about, am I, am I caring for my health and my body? And then of course that, um, that then, uh, impacts of course the household, because as I feel better, uh, as we say down South, I do better. Right. Right. So that's number five. So the sixth one, no yelling, demeaning, or manipulating. And I can't tell you the number of times I have seen parents do this, and uh, I do not demean, uh, I do not manipulate, I do not yell. I, and I'll tell you, I have. I have absolutely done it. I think every parent has done it, but never will I put my son down, no, yeah. nor any child. But you know what I have done, and I that is a form really of demeaning or, or, or manipulating in the past was, you know, saying something in a way that it's kind of passive aggressive. And luckily I caught it and like, I subtracted it back. I said, I, I take that back, even though I know I can't really. Um, but my, my son and I had an argument when he was about five years old, and we still talk about it. <laughs> And it was so funny because we were both yelling and ripping things. It was so funny. And um, and and we laugh at it now and go, that was dumb. And we've forgiven each other and everything. So sometimes we just laugh about it because of how funny it was and so many years ago and how at the time we thought if we just said it louder, that was going to help. <laughs> but that takes us back to the other ones of talk it out, sing it out, you know, take care of yourself and, and you know, and those kinds of things. Um and, and um, you know, I see a lot of manipulating also from very well-meaning parents. They just don't realize they're doing it because they grew up in a household that was manipulative. Right. And that, that can happen with, like, divorced parents. Uh, it can. Yeah, as far as, especially if it's a, a less than amicable split. And uh, I've heard of, you know, kids kind of getting stuck in the middle and, and um, yeah, being asked to kind of... Either relay messages or, oh, or yes. kind of spy on the other parent or or whatever, and I can't I can't even imagine no being well, that a would kid be like, putting in in that no no well it's very hurtful of course long term and mm-hmm. and of course what what the reason these are important and and the reason these would be important for any person or any couple if you're attracted to someone that's doing these things well that's a no go yeah if if 
uh, especially early on in the relationship, if you're seeing these things and you know, this is not somebody I want around. I, I you know, we don't want to have to like uh, force people into some idea of what what we think they should be. We want to be clearly who we are. And if we can come to agreement about what's acceptable in the household, wonderful. And if not, then that's a no go. Mm-hmm. That's going to be nothing but a fight the whole time. That's right. You know, so, so yeah, this was a big one. And, and, um, Right now, we're staying in this really large house, and so I find myself going, hey, up the stairs, and I was like, ooh, that's almost yelling, but that's the only way he can hear me. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I've talked about it. That's right. such a big t- trigger for me. I know, Like, yeah. even, even I will walk across the house to say something, and uh, if somebody's, you know, calling after me, Dave, I'll, I'll say, I'm coming, you know, just... Yeah. Stop yelling at me. I'm on my way over. This is not how I, I ever want to communicate. I know. Well, you know, I remember that, Dave, and I, I thought of you you guys on this one because, really, it's a pretty low form of communication. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, not even when it's not in, a, in an anger place, right. I just I do not respond well to it. And it immediately shuts me down. And, and if you're yelling at me and wanting something from me, even if you're not angry, but you're just wanting to tell me something that's maybe happening going on in the house or something, then I'm already on the defensive about it, and I'm not mm-hmm. receptive to whatever you're about to tell me. I think that's a great self-awareness, yeah. you know, um, because uh, it's really okay to have boundaries around what you want in your own home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that's what's so great about, you know, this whole topic today is that it's not about rules. It's about this is who I am, and this is what really works for me in my home. And so this is like an honor code because it's it's an honor code in that not one person enforces it. We're right. all like you know aware of it. Yeah, that's good. And and the last one is my favorite one. Really, one of my favorites. It's celebrate successes. Celebrate successes. And so we love to have a party. You know, we love to throw a party, which is like drinking um, like a cranberry juice and eating a chocolate bar or something crazy or something really simple. It's like, let's celebrate. We had a great day. Let's celebrate, you know, you got into Allstate or let's celebrate, you know, whatever. Then, then we love to find reasons to celebrate. And so that brings a lot of joy into the home as well. And um, what I've noticed, too, uh, over the years as I've you know, worked with so many people, I've had people reach out recently via email and say, look what I'm doing right now. And I go, awesome. I love to celebrate your success. And so it's, it's um, all, of these, uh, all of these seven things, frankly, have really had an impact in my business and in every aspect of my personal life because it's like, this is really the, these are really the things that matter to me. And I love celebrating good news. Um, especially as a minister, I hear a lot of bad news. So I love <laughs> when, when people come to me with their good news. It's like, yes, awesome. I love that you're in that new job. I love that you're in that new career. I love that you are yeah, making more money than you ever dreamed. I love that you're living your dreams. So yeah, these are, these are a lot of fun. I, and so I'm going to read them all seven down now. And also, as I read them, remember that I'm by no means saying these have to be your code, but they might be ideas and maybe they'll get you going for um, what you might want to um, consider next uh, for your honor code. So here is the Anderson family honor code. <laughs> Tell the truth. Give unconditional love. Talk it out. Sing it out. Take care of yourself, no yelling, demeaning, or manipulating, and celebrate successes. So my hope is that as you hear some of these ideas, that you'll maybe create your own honor code for your home if you don't already have one, and that you'll post it in a place that reminds you to stay true to yourself and know that who you are is ultimately good. It's ultimately God. And that the very Spirit of God is alive in this. And that as you grow and mature, your list might grow and change as well. So we uh, definitely thank you as always for joining us today. And I just am so grateful that you listen and that you feel supported spiritually by our message. And just know we're so honored uh, to support you on the journey that journey of the evolving soul. It is our honor to help you grow, prosper, and evolve. 
Blessings on the journey, dear friend, and we will see you soon. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by Natural Awakenings Magazine, Zen Living Realty, and Support Tech Staffing. This channel is also made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Aggie Payton, Anna Evans, Arlene Meyer, Diana Cox, Leslie Williams, Nora Miles, Sean Kilgore, Susanna Garcia, and Taryn Tucker. If you'd like to support the channel as a patron on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2020, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios. <laughs>